Alright, welcome Lego fans to something completely different here on Bill Brooklyn I's channel. And I know I just said Lego fans, but you may not necessarily be Lego fans, even though that is my specialty here on Bill Brooklyn 9. But today I figured I would do something completely out of the ordinary. It's not plastic related at all. Well, I guess I can entirely say that. But uh, it's entirely un Lego related, um, entirely un Minecraft related. And entirely unhobbit related, so some of you must be shocked and appalled by that, and some of you may be pleased. It's like, well, I can't say I'm pleased that there's no Legos, Hobbits, or Minecraft, but this is another subject that has interested me for even longer than any of those things, which some of you find shocking. So this is something I've been wanting to do for a while, and since I just got my new HD camera, I figured that this would be a good time to do it. And I can tell already that this is going to look way better than it would have on the original camera, of course. This will probably be the second video I upload in this format. Well, maybe not quite. Well, we'll see. It'll come when it comes. So, what I'm going to be doing today is I actually have a small fossil collection. Um, none of them are real, obviously. Well, I take that back. I think some of these are real. Uh, most of the bigger ones are casts, though, because uh, some of the real fossils... You might get a tooth for uh, $10,000. Um, that's not a joke. It's I've actually seen that at a place near me. So some of you may think it's absolutely ridiculous. But if you still want to collect fossils, well, you can get the casts. And they look almost as good. And it's a neat little hobby. Kind of like collecting Legos are. So this is all of my fossils. can't say all of them because I think I have some other sharp teeth somewhere. But this is all the really good ones. So I'm going to be doing this video, and then I also have some relics from the present day. I've got some shark jaws, an alligator head, which you may have seen at the end of some of my videos as a joke. And a couple other little things, so I might do that as well. But for now, these are relics from the past. So, depending on, I don't know if you're an evolution, uh, or evolutionist, I guess is the correct term, or creationist, doesn't matter, I'm going to try and please you both, I don't want to offend anyone, and I want to please everyone as far as possible, so I'll try and take a non-biased view here as much as possible, and I think it'll be lots of fun, and I'll be giving you some facts about the different animals as we go along. So I guess we'll start with some of the smaller ones, now evolutionists believe that these came first, if you're a creationist, obviously, you'd believe everything came at the same time. But, I figured I'd show them first instead of small, and some of you probably won't think it's cool as the other ones. So, here we have a trilobite. Now, these were extremely common at one time. There have been tons of fossils found at these all over the world. I believe um, quite a few in the UK have been found. So, a lot, uh, the Paleozoic era, as the evolutionists believe, is um, the first major chunk of time. And the UK has a lot of fossils from that period. Um, we see giant, giant millipedes, um, longer than a human is tall. And all kinds of other neat stuff there. But lots of trilobites, I believe, there as well. But these are found all over the world. Let me look this up real quick. You can... Keep looking at that, and the palace cinema in the background there. I believe they may have been found on every continent except Antarctica. Let's see, yeah, fossil finds worldwide, so maybe even on Antarctica. Um, so the name means three lobes, because most, well, all trilobites actually are divided into three what they call lobes. The head area is one of them, and I can't take say for sure where the other two are divided. But if you're an evolutionist, they live 520 to 248 million years ago, right up to the time, right before the dinosaurs. And they range anywhere in size from 0.2 inches to 32 inches long. So this one is probably about 4 to 5 inches long. And they were scavengers, so they would have lived off of debris at the bottom of the ocean, and they would have been prey for lots of different animals. Um, notable, some of them are the giant orthocones. There is a giant orthocone. It's basically a giant squid with a shell around it. 
And another one would have been sea scorpions, like Megalograptus. And for those of you who don't know what those are, they were basically non-venomous scorpions that lived in the ocean and some believe were the first animals to crawl onto land. I don't know if I necessarily believe that, but some people do. Sorry about the hammering in the background. So, trial bites. Staple food source for lots of different animals and extremely common at one time. Another one I have here, this is an ammonite, and ammonites are even more common than trilobites. In fact, they are the most common fossil found anywhere at any time. So, if you're going to be a fossil collector, ammonites are a good place to start. Let me see, I know they're in here somewhere, but they live for an extremely long time, so I can't even find the area they were ruled in. Let me check the index. Um, they're kind of like nautiluses, and those are still alive today. If you go to SeaWorld or an aquarium, you'll see those. And they're basically little, they're kind of like little squid that live in a shell. It's like a cross between a snail and a squid or something. They're really weird looking. A M. Ah, there we go. 76. Yeah, Ammonites. Named after the Egyptian god Ammon. I have no idea why they were named after him. You have to look that one up. Uh, it's a type of cephalopod mollusk, and of course, we still have cephalopods today. And here's that animal I was telling you about, the nautilus. So they're still alive today. They're really weird looking, but they're pretty cool. Um, supposedly they lived 400 to 65 million years ago. That's when the dinosaurs would have died out. And their range of size is anywhere from one inch. That's about what this one is to eight feet in diameter. So absolutely enormous, some of them were. And they were carnivorous. They would have uh, had little tentacles that came out and just grabbed microscopic prey. And once again, their fossils are found worldwide. I know a lot of them are found in the UK once again. So there is an ammonite. Now here's an animal that looks very similar to it. I believe it's called a goniatite. So, a very similar type of animal. I can't say for sure when it lived, and I don't know hardly anything about it. Just know that it's something that very similar to the ammonites. Here's a comparison. This one's obviously a little bigger. So, and then this is called Orthocaris. It would have lived a very long time ago. And you can see it there. I think it was uh, just a little invertebrate that probably lived at the bottom of the sea. Or it may have been the kind of squid. I'd have to look it up. I'll try to remember to put something in the description maybe about that. So you have Orthocaris and the Goniatite. Let's get on to some bigger things now. As you can see, we have a giant sea monster here. Now this is called a Pliosaur. And they're not dinosaurs. They're marine reptiles like a sea turtle, except um, they're a little scarier looking than a sea turtle, if you ask me. This one in particular is called Chronosaurus, so it has the short jaws. They're related to the Plesiosaurus that just about everybody knows what that looks like. It's the long-necked, sharp-toothed creature that lived in the ocean, and this is a very close relative to it, apparently. So, I don't have any Pliosaur fossils, but I do have something that looks very, very, very similar to it and lived a little later, called a Mosasaur, or a Mosasaur, depending on how you pronounce it. So as you can see, they both look very similar, when in fact they are quite different. These are supposedly closely related to snakes, the mosasaurs or mosasaurs are. Chronosaurs, their entire lineage died out. But I personally think they look very similar. I can't see how you could honestly tell the difference for the most part. There's obviously a few differences, such as the much, much longer tail. But overall pretty similar. And here is just a tooth from one of these creatures, and as you can see, compared to my hands, that would take a nasty chunk out of you, especially when there's dozens and dozens more of them. And some people think that mosasaurs swim in groups, which makes things even scarier. Apparently they lived about 110 million years ago, Cretaceous era, or period, I should say. And this particular one was found in the phosphate deposits of Kuribga, Uidzem, Morocco.
we'll just say Morocco, because I'm sure I butchered the pronunciation of those other cities, provinces, states, no idea. So it's an information on the Mosasaur. I think that sounds a little cooler than Mosasaur, personally. Um, one of the most famous Mosasaurs was Tylosaurus, and this is probably what this one's... Uh, actually, I take it back. This is probably not from a Tylosaurus, because Tylosaurus was the biggest Mosasaur that ever lived. It is a squamate reptile. That's the fancy term for Mosasaur. Lived 89 to 65 million years ago. Um, 49 feet long. So we're talking about as big as a whale shark. Except this one has teeth, and it's hungry, and it's after you. Obviously, it's carnivorous. And it's been found in North America and Europe. So probably where most of you viewers are from, for the most part anyway. So, here's a, a computer artist's rendition of it. And here's another one. This is probably, this is a smaller one. This is probably about the size from the one whose tooth I have. And it says that they're more closely related to modern lizards and snakes than to other prehistoric marine reptiles, apparently. I don't know how they, how they know this stuff. Pretty much anything you find in any of these books is assumption. Because, obviously, unless they, unless we have Jurassic Park in our hands and they bring them back to life, we're never going to know more than the size and the, probably the weight with mathematical calculations that I don't feel like figuring out in school. Other than that, everything else is pretty much assumption. Well, there's a few things that we can take pretty good guesses on. T-Rex here, for example, who we'll get to here in a little bit. As you can see, his hind legs are much bigger than his front legs. In fact, he's very famous for having these tiny little arms. And our best guess is that he was bipedal. Uh, that means that he walked on two legs. But I can't prove that. He could just he could crawl around like this and support his body weight with his front legs. I can't prove that either one of these is correct. Maybe he hopped on one foot. I don't know. But um, we make the scientists make their best guesses based on animals that are still alive today and just common sense. I don't think T Rex hopped on his on just one leg. Do you? By the way, this is a, this is my favorite T Rex model. It's um. Oh, what's the company? It's like Capo or something. Papo, that's what it is. P-A-P-O. And it looks just like the one from Jurassic Park. And I think it's really cool looking. Probably can find it on Amazon. Anyway, let's keep moving. Now here's the plesiosaur. The case got a little cracked. And that's what I said earlier. The pliosaur is related to. Chronosaurus here. Except this is the one with the very long neck that you can't see. I can probably... Yeah, I have, I have a picture of one here. But first of all, um, lived about, about the exact same time as the Mosasaur, as a matter of fact. And this one was found in the exact same area, Kuribga Woods in Morocco. So pretty much the exact time and place as a Mosasaur, if you're an evolutionist. And if you're a creationist, well, you're going to believe the same thing they live at the same time. So, as you can see, a lot more slender. And this is one that is more designed for catching fish. Mosasaur being 50 feet long, you're going to need something a little more substantial than fish in your diet, I think. But uh, Plesiosaur, although it's really big because of its long neck, it doesn't have a huge body mass, so it didn't need quite as much food as a Mosasaur would. And I'm sure that those two guys would duke it out a lot. And having that long neck, it probably got snapped in half a lot, unfortunately, for you plesiosaur likers. Now, here's a picture. Um, this is a type of plesiosaur called an elasmosaurus. Famous story here that's really funny. Um, what's his name? I can't think of his name. And it should be here. This is a really short article on elasmosaurus. I believe it was Edward Drinker Cope. Is either you know what I'm gonna check this. I don't want to give you false information, but I thought for sure there would be this book, and I really don't want to cut the recording. But um, yeah, it doesn't look like it's in here. Well, I'll be right back. All right, check my facts. Turns out I, I was right. It was Edward Drinker Cope. 
and he was very hasty to publish his findings when he found the first plesiosaur skeleton. And it turns out that he put the head on the wrong end of the creature, and there was a fierce uh, rivalry between him and another paleontologist, Othniel Marsh. So, as you can imagine, if you had a feud with someone and you made such a silly mistake as that, you're going to be absolutely humiliated. So that's a little bit of a funny story there with the plesiosaur. And the final one I have here, you're not going to find very exciting, Encodus. This is what the plesiosaur would be eating. It's a saber-toothed fish, as you can see there. Um, yeah, found in the exact same area, Encodus libicus. And this one's a little broken, not by me, just so you know. It would have been broken by rocks piling on top of it, water, time, that sort of thing. No, I'm, not as irres I'm not as irresponsible as that. You know, you know a little bit of mine better than that. The final underwater things I have are from perhaps one of the scariest monsters ever to live on our planet. This is scarier than Jaws, folks. Way scarier. If you saw this coming at you in the water, and some people think it's still alive. I think it would be really cool if it was, but I don't really believe it. I think we would have seen it by now because it is a 53 foot long shark. There is a man, Nigel Marvin. He's very, very interesting. Um, naturalist and he's got some very cool shows out. I would highly encourage you to check them out. Chased by Dinosaurs and Prehistoric Park are my favorites. But anyway, he's standing inside the jaws of Megalodon. For comparison, that is a modern day shark. If I tried to stand in there, well, let's just say I'd probably have lots of scrapes all over me and I'd probably be, be very sore the next morning. But yeah, you can stand comfortably inside the jaws of this shark here, and that is Megalodon. Carcharodon Megalodon. A whale-killing shark. And here are some teeth from this fearsome creature. Here's probably the uh, most intact of them. And here's my hand for comparison. Pretty much as big as my hand. So, you can actually find these washed up on the beach sometimes. So, make sure you're looking out for giant shark teeth when you're at the beach, folks. Even though I know that sharks are the last thing you want to be thinking about when you're at the beach, unfortunately. In fact, it's actually like the first thing I think about when I'm at the beach. Anyway, so here is the tooth from Carcharodon Megalodon, and here are some smaller and less intact Megalodon teeth. Wish I had a great white, great white shark tooth here. I know I have them. I just don't have them on me right now. But you can just imagine, they're about as big as that part of my finger. So, Carcharodon Megalodon. It's, it was a Neosalatian lamnid shark. Don't ask me what that means. And supposedly it lived 16 to 1.6 million years ago, but as I mentioned, mentioned before, there's a large group of people who think that this dude's still alive stalking the deep ocean and killing whales and stuff. This is that's what these this that's what this thing ate by the way was whales. This thing could probably easily take down a blue whale. So if you ever see one of these make sure you tell me in the comments. As long as you live of course. But yeah, pretty scary stuff there with Carcharodon Megalodon. Now I know what the uh as fascinating as Megalodon is, dinosaurs, of course, are still the most appealing, prehistoric, extinct animals alive. And I do have a few cool fossils here from them. I guess I'll save T-Rex for last, because T-Rex is everyone's favorite. I'll start with this. It's an herbivore. And a lot of people are, just aren't fascinated by herbivores, just about by carnivores. This looks like a tooth, but it's actually the thumb spike from Iguanodon. Iguanodon was, um, I believe, one of the, uh, it was definitely, yeah, it wasn't the first dinosaur found, it was in the top three first dinosaurs to be found, I believe. And this is kind of what made dinosaurs famous, because they actually made big, hugely inaccurate um, statues of them, 
at the palace in England. And they're still there, you can still visit them, but just know that they are nothing, nothing like the real animal. They got them on four legs and they have this on its nose, you know it's on its thumb, you now know. And let me find a picture, uh, just so you know what it looks like in case you haven't seen Iguana before. But it's one of the first dinosaurs that people will probably think of after T-Rex and Stegosaurus and all that. So there's Iguanodon. You can see here that is the thumb spike. So you can imagine how big the rest of the animal is. So Iguanodon, that means Iguana Tooth. I guess they think that the teeth look very similar to an Iguana's, or at least they used to think that back in the 1800s before they did a large amount of studying on both of the creatures. It was an Ornithischian, Ornithopod dinosaur. And those were like um, the duckbills, um, those, and I believe like the stegosaurs as well. Uh, supposedly lived 144 to 112 million years ago. That would have been the early Cretaceous period, um, a little before T-Rex. So he probably would not have met T-Rex, as a matter of fact. It was 33 feet long, and you can see a human compared to an iguana on there. You could definitely be impaled by one of its spikes if it got angry at you, but most likely it wouldn't because it was an herbivore, of course, just eating the plant matter. And it probably used those thumb spikes for defense from creatures such as the raptors. And we'll see some raptors here in just a few minutes. And fossil finds in Europe, Asia, and North America. Found in Europe, of course. Oh, and here it says that it was the second dinosaur to be identified by science right after Megalosaurus which was a dinosaur similar to a T-Rex. So, last look here at an Iguanodon thumb spike. So, you can see my thumb there, and this is just the thumb spike. So you can imagine what kind of damage that would inflict on a large predator. Alright, next up here we have... Well, I guess I'll go ahead and show you this one. Now, I don't think a lot of you are going to know what this is, at least not at first glance. It's actually a... It's, the claw from Baryonyx. Now, um, if you've seen Jurassic Park 3, there is a predator in there called Spinosaurus, and it has a big sail on its back, and it actually ends up killing T Rex, much to my dismay. But Baryonyx was similar to a Spinosaurus, except it wouldn't have had the big sail on its back, and unfortunately, this book does not have a Baryonyx in it. But it was kind of like a cross between a T-Rex and a Velociraptor. So, uh, you can imagine pretty scary stuff there. And it would have used this, apparently, for catching fish in the streams. Uh, a lot of people think it was a fish eater. I may have a model in the because I don't think I have a heat with me right now. Mm -hmm. nah, that doesn't look like it, unfortunately. But Baryonyx is a pretty scary theropod dinosaur. Caught fish in the Cretaceous period with this big claw. And here's my hand as a comparison. It's way bigger, than, way longer than my hand anyway. And of course, this is a cast. Got it at Dinosaur World. That's uh, quite a ways actually from my house. But it's worth going there every once in a while, I think. So, Baryonyx Claw. Look up Baryonyx if you want to know more about it. Second to last thing I have is something from Velociraptor. Now, everybody knows Velociraptor. He's one of the main antagonists in Jurassic Park. The thing is, you have to get that notion out of your head. Velociraptor is nothing like the raptors from Jurassic Park. It was way smaller, but no less smart than they are portrayed in the movie, apparently. They were extremely intelligent. Some people think that they may have been as smart as apes or birds. Birds like this. Personally, I think she's an idiot, but apparently there's some intelligence in there. I don't know. I can't find it myself, but apparently there's, there's quite a bit of knowledge in that little brain behind that fearsome beak. But anyway, here I have two um, Velociraptor relics. The first is its toe claw now. This was used for slicing open prey. If you've seen Jurassic Park, you may remember Alan Grant scares that little boy by describing how he would be killed if there were velociraptors around him. Because he makes fun of it by calling it a six-foot turkey. 
except they were not six feet. In fact, they were about six feet long, but definitely not six feet tall. Velociraptor being a swift hunter um, can also mean swift thief. It was a theropod dinosaur, most common raptor, well, I should say the most famous raptor. Lived 80 to 70 million years ago, so would it have met T-Rex? Let me look that up real quick. I know that everybody wants to know what lived at the same time as T-Rex. Um, possibly. Possibly. Um, probably not, though. But it's definitely possible. And it was six and a half feet long, but as you can see, it was only about half as tall as a human not taller than a human as shown in Jurassic Park. Of course it was carnivorous and so far the only fossils that have been found are in Asia. And yeah it says right here the Velociraptors depicted in Jurassic Park were well over twice the size of the real animal. So they're not quite as scary as they are in the movie. I don't think they could open doors. I think that was some Hollywood hype there honestly. Although it wasn't the book too. And the second relic I have from Velociraptor is its skull. So, as you can see, its skull isn't enormous. Here's my hand, as a comparison. Stretched out to its max. But, uh, inhabited the deserts of Mongolia in the mid-Cretaceous period. It would have hunted in packs, apparently. They've found lots of Velociraptor skeletons together, hunting small ceratopsians. Ceratopsians are like triceratops, except a lot smaller than triceratops and they would have brought them down in packs to make things a little easier and share the load for those of you who know Lord of the Rings. And this one happened to come with a nice stand to put it on. So, very nice. This particular one, six feet, six feet long, it would have weighed about 50 pounds. Uh, 70 found in a formation, the Jadakta formation in Mongolia, and it is a cast. And this one in particular lived 75 million years ago apparently. So there's Velociraptor. Pretty scary stuff, but I still don't think it's quite as scary or as famous as everybody's favorite dinosaur, Tyrannosaurus Rex. So there we have Tyrannosaurus Rex. We all know what he looks like. We all know he's really scary. He haunts everybody's dreams, or I should say nightmares, and every little kid would love to meet Tyrannosaurus Rex one day in safety. That is. And this right here, this fossil, is actually the toenail from T Rex. So you can imagine clipping those toenails. Dare me, that would that would that looks like it'd be painful to use nail clippers on that. I think you'd almost have to use a file on T Rex toenails. And here's his toenail as a comparison. So, you can just imagine, with a toenail that size, don't even get me started on, like, the skull or something. The skull, I imagine, would probably take up about half the size of this table, at least. And it'd probably be so heavy from all the minerals and stuff that build up in there that it would probably crush the table. <laughs> Maybe not. I think it's a pretty sturdy table. But, even so, T-Rex said, come on. That's why I have to have. That's why I have to have this long tail to counterbalance the weight of such an enormous head. So let's find T. Rex in here, or correctly, Tyrannosaurus Rex, the most famous of dinosaurs, meaning terrible reptile. Not exactly. Um, it would mean terrible reptile king, because Rex means king. I know a little bit of Latin. Uh, animal type, theropod, tyrannosaur, dinosaur. So there were other tyrannosaurs, just not nearly as scary or mean as Tyrannosaurus rex himself. 75 to 65 million years ago, would have been there when the asteroid came and obliterated the entire face of the world for thousands of years, or when a giant flood came, depending on what you believe. Personally, I think either one would be a pretty scary way to go, even for such a fearsome monster as Tyrannosaurus Rex. And carnivorous, of course, 40 feet long, about half that size would be its height, I think. And you would come up to about his thigh. 
and fossil finds in the USA and Canada. So right here in the USA we had T-Rex. Specifically in Montana is where they find a lot of T-Rex skeletons, I know. So there you have T-Rex toenails. Those are some very scary toenails. So that is all the fossils I have, at least for now. I think it's a nice little collection. It's definitely not as big as my Lego collection, but they are a lot more rare than plastic bricks, and some of them are a lot more expensive, especially it's like Carcharodontosaurus tooth. Carcharodontosaurus was very similar to T-Rex. Carcharodontosaurus tooth is going for nine thousand dollars. That's a little. That's just a little out of my budget. Just, just, just a little bit though. So there you have. That's my fossil collection. All in all, it's probably worth somewhere around one hundred and fifty, two hundred dollars. I've collected these over almost about ten years now. I'd say this is the oldest one I have. I've had this since I was like five. And the newest one, I believe, might actually be this trilobite, even though it's pretty uh, common. You can get one for 5 or $10 a cast. But I have to say my favorite is probably the Velociraptor skull. And you know what, I just realized I forgot one of my fossils. This wasn't with the rest of my fossils, I actually had it hanging on my wall. And this is either my favorite or my second favorite, with up there with the Velociraptor skull. And it is a pterosaur. Pretty cool stuff there, I think. Once again, it's just a cast. This one was found in Solenhofen, Germany. And the Solenhofen limestone formation. And this particular dude lived about 150 million years ago in the Jurassic period. So he would have been probably a hunting fish on the beach or the lake shore. Uh, with giant sauropods like Apatosaurus, Diplodocus. And for those of you who still want to call it Brontosaurus, go ahead. But they renamed it because they deducted that it wouldn't have actually shook the earth like thunder. So there you have a pterosaur, Pterodactylus kachi. I believe I'm saying this right. See, saying that right. I should say. So uh, I don't have Pterodactylus kachi in here. The most similar one I could probably think of. It looks a lot like that, as a matter of fact, would be Rhamphorhynchus. If I can find it, I should be able to. Rhamphorhynchus was about the same size as this, maybe a little bit bigger. And should be here somewhere. Just a small pterosaur, this one, this one in particular did hunt on the beaches. There's Here's this another one, Patinosaurus. This one lived a lot before the Pterodactylus, though. And it doesn't really look a lot like it. But Ramphorhynchus. Here it is. The Jurassic Seagull. Kind of scary looking, I think. Um, there's a picture of the fossil. I think it looks pretty similar to mine. Probably, it's not the same species, but I think it was pretty similar. It means beak nose. It didn't really have a nose, though. It just had nostril openings. Pterosaur, about 170 to 144 million years ago, had a six-foot wingspan, so probably a little, quite a bit bigger than that, actually. Was carnivorous, hunted fish, and fossil finds in Europe and Africa. So there you have Pterodactylus kachi. So that's my main full fossil collection, except for a few little sharp teeth. So yeah, my favorite is either the Velociraptor skull or the Pterosaur skeleton. Although it's pretty neat to have a T-Rex toenail as well. And sharks that could have been big enough to eat a blue whale. The mosasaurs are awesome. So all kinds of cool stuff here. If I was going to get another fossil, I think I'd want to get something from a Spinosaurus. If you've seen Jurassic Park 3, it's the big guy with the sail fin on its back that kills T-Rex at the beginning of the movie, much to my dismay. And by the way, this book I was referencing, I highly recommend The Complete Guide to Prehistoric Life, or if you want to rename it, Extinct Life. Um, it has all kinds of dinosaurs, not just dinosaurs, but uh, marine reptiles, pterosaurs, stuff that lived before dinosaurs, woolly mammoths, um, trilobites, all that good stuff. It doesn't have every dinosaur in here. 
but it has quite a few. And that's T-Rex, by the way. It's a complete guide to prehistoric life by Tim Haynes and Paul Chambers. And this, uh, the pictures are from an outstanding series called Walking with Dinosaurs. And then there are some prequels and sequels uh, before the dinosaurs, Walking with Beasts, Allosaurus, Chased by Dinosaurs. So there's a whole series there, probably all total about 10 to 15 hours of footage. It's amazing footage. And for nothing else, even if you don't agree with anything they're saying at all, it's just a nice way to visualize the dinosaurs other than some of the incorrect stuff in Jurassic Park, such as the six-foot-tall Velociraptors. And don't even get me started on the Dilophosaurus that spits venom from 50 feet away. That's ridiculous. So, thanks for tuning in to this very special episode of Bilbo Brick 09. Of course, um, lots more LEGO reviews coming. I'll have a few more videos like this with some alligators and sharks and stuff. If I get any more fossils, I'll make sure that I shoot some videos on those. And, as I mentioned before, except for a few videos that I'll be uploading uh, within the next couple months, Bill Brick 09 is now in HD. So, pretty exciting stuff there. So, make sure that you start collecting some cool fossils. Uh, check out Walking with Dinosaurs to complete that prehistoric life. And, of course, if you haven't seen it, Jurassic Park is a good place to start, too. Amazing movie. It just has a few little inaccuracies. So, thanks for tuning in. We will see you next time, and next time you go swimming, let me know if you see Megalodon, that is, if he doesn't eat.